A singularity or gravitational singularity is a point where gravity is so intense that space-time itself breaks down catastrophically. Imagine a place where the rules of physics as we know them simply don't apply. This isn't just a place where things get really weird. It's where they become fundamentally incomprehensible. In general relativity, a singularity is where density becomes infinite. This means that all the mass of an object is squished into an infinitely small point. Think of it as trying to cram the entire Earth into a single atom. Now, black holes are the ultimate cosmic vacuum cleaners, pulling in everything that crosses their event horizon, the point of no return. The closer you get to the center of a black hole, the stronger the gravitational pull becomes. At the heart of a black hole lies the singularity. Here, gravity is so strong that not even light can escape. The singularity marks a boundary where our current understanding of physics breaks down. It's the ultimate clash of general relativity and quantum mechanics. On one hand, general relativity tells us that space-time curves infinitely. On the other hand, quantum mechanics doesn't allow particles to occupy an infinitely small space. This paradox has kept physicists scratching their heads for decades. Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose developed theorems describing these singularities, showing that, under certain conditions, a collapsing star must form a singularity. This is known as the Penrose-Hawking Singularity Theorem. But what really happens inside this mysterious point? That's a question we can't yet answer. Interestingly, the concept of singularity isn't just confined to black holes. The very beginning of our universe, the Big Bang, is also considered a singularity. At that moment, the universe was in an extremely hot, dense state. It didn't collapse into a black hole because the rapid expansion of space changed the rules. As of now, neither general relativity nor quantum mechanics can fully explain the earliest moments of the Big Bang or the true nature of singularities. We're in uncharted territory and it might take a revolutionary new theory to unlock these cosmic mysteries. Contrary to popular belief, not all singularities are the same. Each type exhibits distinct physical features relevant to the theories from which they originally emerged. For instance, singularities can have different shapes, such as conical or curved. Some even exist without event horizons, known as naked singularities. Conical singularities occur when there is a point where the limit of some diffeomorphism invariant quantity does not exist or becomes infinite, making space-time non-smooth at that point. Imagine space-time around this point looking like a cone with the singularity located at the tip. An example of a conical singularity is a cosmic string or even a Schwarzschild black hole. On the other hand, curvature singularities are encountered in solutions to the equations of general relativity or other gravity theories like supergravity. These points are where the metric blows up to infinity. However, many of these infinities result from using an inappropriate coordinate system. To verify a singularity, one must check if diffeomorphism invariant quantities become infinite. For instance, the Schwarzschild solution describing a non-rotating, uncharged black hole shows a part of the metric becoming infinite at the event horizon. Yet space-time at the event horizon remains regular when using a different coordinate system, such as Kruskal coordinates. However, at the center of the black hole, the metric becomes infinite, suggesting a true singularity verified by the Kretschmann scalar. In the case of a non-rotating black hole, the singularity occurs at a single point, known as a point singularity. In a rotating black hole, or Kerr black hole, the singularity forms a ring called a ring singularity. This could theoretically become a wormhole. More broadly, a space-time is considered singular if it is geodesically incomplete, meaning there are freely falling particles whose motion cannot be determined beyond a finite time, especially after reaching the singularity. For example, any observer inside the event horizon of a non-rotating black hole would fall into its center within a finite period. Interestingly, the classical Big Bang cosmological model contains a causal singularity at time zero, where all spatial dimensions are size zero, with infinite density, temperature and space-time curvature. Finally, let's discuss the concept of naked singularities, which are singularities not hidden behind an event horizon. Initially, it was believed that general relativity hides every singularity behind an event horizon, as per the cosmic censorship hypothesis. However, in the early 1990s, physicists Stuart Shapiro and Saul Tukolsky's computer simulations 
indicated that rotating planes of dust might allow for naked singularities. What these would look like remains unknown, but it's hypothesized that light entering such a singularity would have its geodesics terminated, making the naked singularity appear similar to a black hole. Before Stephen Hawking came up with the concept of Hawking radiation, the question of black holes having entropy had been avoided. However, this concept demonstrates that black holes radiate energy, which conserves entropy and solves the incompatibility problems with the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy, however, implies heat and therefore temperature. The loss of energy also implies that black holes do not last forever, but rather evaporate or decay slowly. Black hole temperature is inversely related to mass. All known black hole candidates are so large that their temperature is far below that of the cosmic background radiation, which means they will gain energy on net by absorbing this radiation. They cannot begin to lose energy on net until the background temperature falls below their own temperature. This will occur at a cosmological redshift of more than one million rather than the thousand or so since the background radiation formed. Many theories in physics have mathematical singularities of one kind or another. Equations for these physical theories predict that the ball of mass of some quantity becomes infinite or increases without limit. This is generally a sign for a missing piece in the theory, as in the ultraviolet catastrophe, renormalization and instability of a hydrogen atom predicted by the Lama formula. In classical field theories, including special relativity but not general relativity, one can say that a solution has a singularity at a particular point in space-time where certain physical properties become ill-defined, with space-time serving as a background field to locate the singularity. A singularity in general relativity, on the other hand, is more complex because space-time itself becomes ill-defined and the singularity is no longer part of the regular space-time manifold. In general relativity, a singularity cannot be defined by where or when. Some theories, such as the theory of loop quantum gravity, suggest that singularities may not exist. This is also true for such classical unified field theories as the Einstein-Maxwell-Dirac equations. The idea can be stated in the form that due to quantum gravity effects there is a minimum distance beyond which the force of gravity no longer continues to increase as the distance between the masses becomes shorter or alternatively that interpenetrating particle waves mask gravitational effects that would be felt at a distance. Motivated by such philosophy of loop quantum gravity, recently it has been shown that such conceptions can be realized through some elementary constructions based on the refinement of the first axiom of geometry, namely the concept of a point by considering Klein's prescription of accounting for the extension of a small spot that represents or demonstrates a point which was a programmatic call that he called as a fusion of arithmetic and geometry. Klein's program, according to Born, was actually a mathematical route to consider natural uncertainty in all observations while describing a physical situation by means of real numbers.